This statement is false. Wow. So much thought to put behind this. How do we understand it? If this statement is true, that, that the statement is false, then it must be false. But if it's false, then it must be true, which would make it false, which would make it true. That is exactly what I'm going to talk about today. Hello, my name is Drainin, and today I'm doing a weird thing that I don't normally do, but I'm doing it anyways. Uh, I'm evaluating a paradox. I don't get a good chance to really show off me when I'm doing YouTube stuff. Like, the gaming stuff, the funny stuff, the walkthroughs, everything, that is me. That is entirely me. That's not even a persona. That's what I am. That's what I do. But you don't get to see all of me, and all of me includes this little nerdy transaction looking at paradoxes. And I'm super excited. I woke up this morning, and I was like... Because what happened was I solved a paradox. And if you don't understand the gravity of that, it's pretty big. Because paradoxes are unresolvable, essentially. So being able to resolve an unresolvable thing that has been going around for a long time is pretty big. This the statement this statement is false is called a liar's paradox. It's otherwise known as an epitomies epimides bees bees the bees not the bees not the bees. Basically, um, it is a type of paradox that is contradictory if it is true, because it'd be false. It's not necessarily from epimides. But, um, it came from a rough statement from him. Anyways, there are several proposed solutions to this paradox, and I want to quickly establish something right here. The only research I did was to find out the, Epim the Epimides thing. I didn't research the solutions, I didn't research anything else. This is, all I've done was just look at the Epimides things. And the only reason I know there's solutions is because it said in the Wikipedia thing that there are solutions. So. If I happen to imitate, copy, or even be the exact same as another solution, I don't know. I'm not even going to check until after I've, I'm done making this video because this is something I came up with. Whether it is original or not, it is still something I came up with, which I just want to clarify that. I, I didn't draw inspiration from anything. I literally just woke up and I went, oh my god, I have a solution which is pretty cool in my standards. So I just wanted to establish that before we get any further here. When I say solutions though, I'm mostly saying they're proposed solutions because like I said, a paradox isn't actually solvable as much as I would love it to be. It, it's proposed solutions because the solutions themselves become paradoxes. It, it isn't necessarily the goal to solve a paradox. Uh, it's more so the pursuit of what you find when you're pursuing the the paradox solution themselves the conclusion i came up with is that the statement this statement is false is true and i'm not talking about contextually and when i'm talking about contextually i'm talking about uh let's say someone says charles went to the park today but you know for a fact that, that is a lie so when you say to them so and so said that charles was going to the park today this statement is false it's ironic but the statement in question in that statement is actually prior. So that's the context. In order to solve this paradox, you have to take it in the context of the paradox itself. This means that there can be no prior text it is inferring or referring to, nor post it. That's how you think you could solve it. That's not actually solving it. And that sucks because that would be really nice. A really nice. So, Sadly, we're gonna have to look at this like math. Uh, I'm like a good chunk of high schoolers and stuff Even though I'm in university I'm a little bit older and stuff. I Generally have a dislike for math. I understand its uses its practical applications, but if you ask me to take a math course or Something else. I'm not taking the math. I don't even care if it's like a Stupid course. I'm not taking the math probably uh, but it's a very valuable tool, especially in this instance, even though it has to do with words, which is really cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a positive and negative value to this statement. So the statement is true that it is false, which means that I am affirming 
that it is negative. So if we're going to start this off, we're going to create a cycle. The initial representation of the cycle is going to be the negative symbol, a hyphen, a dash, whatever you want to call it. It's the negative. It's the minus. We're starting with the minus and now with the positive because I'm not saying that because it's negative it's true. I'm saying that it's true because it's negative. I am affirming the fact that it is negative, which means that the original statement is negative. What happens when I do that is I'm making it a false, which means I'm making it positive. So instead of the way, when I'm putting a negative, it's because the negative is positive and so on. So it's a little confusing, but it does make sense. If we go through the cycle, starting with the negative symbol and then adding the plus symbol to instantly cancel it out because that's what it does, only to go to the negative symbol, to go to the positive symbol, to go to the negative symbol, to go to the positive symbol, you start understanding that it is an infinite loop of negatives and positives. But there's always going to be one more negative symbol than positive, right? Well, in order to understand this, we need to look at infinity. What is infinity? Now, there are a whole bunch of sources you can look up on the internet as to different types of infinity, because believe it or not, there is. Uh, the most handy is actually looking at Vsauce, and this is actually where I understand a lot of understandings of infinity. So go check out Vsauce's videos on infinity, and you'll be surprised. Between the number one and the number two, there's a whole bunch of decimals. There's a whole bunch of fractions, whatever you use. 1.01, 1.02, but it goes even further than that. You can go 1.00000000, however many zeros, and then one. There is an infinite possibility of zeros before the first integer, not to mention infinite length in general. This means between two finite numbers, one and two, there's an infinite amount of smaller bits of them. But that doesn't work, right? How can something infinite be confined by something finite? That doesn't work. Does it? Yes, it does. Infinity is so complex because what you get is when you're looking at a number representation of infinity, when you're going through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, etc, etc, there is the exact same amount of even or odd numbers as there are as even and odd numbers. Why? Because it's infinite. It, it's a lot to, to try to wrap your head around, but it, it does, ha that's how it works. Sorry. Sorry about your brain. Sorry. Probably added a few, a few little wrinkles. That's me. Adam wrinkles. So good. In this case of infinite, between one and two, it's inf it is not infinite at the same time of being infinite. The issue in lies because we know the beginning and the end of this infinite loop. We know it starts at 1 or just past 1 and we know it ends directly at 2. Point being, it is confined between 1 and 2. It is finite, but it is also infinite. In fact, we can grab any number from this infinite sequence and apply finite laws to it. We can choose 0.0, .0 to the power of 10 trillion and 3 and we can multiply, add, divide, subtract, square root, or can't square root. Don't do that. We can manipulate it like we would any other number, even though up until that point, that number wasn't a number until we actually named it. This type of infinity is applicable to the laws that we give finite numbers. All this to say, apply this infinity to the true and false of this statement. The negative starts it off. The positive goes after it. Negative, positive. And it goes infinitely. But we know that there is an end because there is either, there, well, there's one solution with two possibilities, it being that it is false or true. We know that there is a solution. It's the same thing with math. We know that it will end up with two. So we know the laws that can find two and can find the infinite number of decimals before it. So we know that there's two possibilities with a world of infinites in between them because of this loop. Our goal is to somehow break this loop without breaking the constraints that are applied to the infinity in this case. In other words, we cannot break the binary answer. We cannot break true or false. We cannot say it is both. We cannot say it is neither. This is where the fun comes in. Infinity is a variable, essentially, because if you don't know the variable of something, it could be 
anything until you actually solve what it is. Let's go into a little bit of mini algebra here. X plus one is still X plus one until you know what X is. This is infinity. We cannot take a random part of it and apply it to the whole of infinity. It is impossible. So it will always remain X plus one. In this case, since we started with a negative, which is in this case that the statement is true, then that has to be able to apply to all the rest, which means that no matter what, no matter infinity, 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 plus one negative, which is again that the statement is true. So no matter how many times you cycle through, there will always be one more adding on to that the statement is true. No matter how many loops, but wait. What if you say that the statement is false? Does that same logic not apply? Let's look at it. If I say the statement is false, I am saying that the statement is true. I know, Trayden. We've gone over this. How am I supposed to know? Okay. I appreciate that. By saying it is false is by saying it is false. Phone is a phone. <gasps> the four rings that I wear everywhere I go are four rings. It doesn't change. I can say that they are not not rings, but I can't say they're not rings. The mere being of this statement is that it is false. If I am saying... If I say that this cat is not a D-bag, I'd be lying. If I say that the cat is a D-bag, I wouldn't be lying. What you are doing essentially when you are saying that it is false is you are merely affirming that it is false, even though not saying that it is. If the being of something is what it is and you say what it is, it doesn't change what it is. If I call this cat a cat, it's all good. If I call it a dog, I'd be lying. If I said every dog is a cat, that would be lying. If I said every dog that isn't a cat is a dog, that'd be the truth. So it becomes whether or not the statement you're making is redundant or not. Saying that the statement is false is redundant because it is false. This means that no matter which way you want to solidify your answer, it will always be that the answer is true. Even if you say it's false initially because that's just saying it's true. So it just kind of loops back. I'm glad it works that way. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. A statement can be truly false, but a statement can never be falsely true. I'm not saying that to correlate to my argument. I'm saying that in general, you can never make something falsely true. You can make up a false truth, but that is still not the truth. That is still false. But something can be false, which means that it is truly false. The statement is truly false. Anyways, guys, that's all I have for this paradox. I don't know if I'm ever going to do this again. I enjoyed it, and I really hope you guys really got to see, even if you didn't watch the whole thing, to see that I am a nerd. I'm not just like a, an MTG nerd. I'm not a buy an Overwatch thing. I have a Chewbacca throw blanket that has sleeves. It's basically a onesie, but not. I, I play video games. I am not just that. I am someone who thinks. And someone who wishes this cat would stop interrupting his recording. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned a bit, if, if you think you understand it, but you're still a little confused, that's good. That's normal. Honestly, it, it, most people probably can't wrap this whole thing around their head the first time. Come up here. So, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned, and uh, if you, even if you disagree with the the uh, the conclusion I made, but you think my argument is valid, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you thought my argument was completely dumb, full of fallacy, or you just hate me or you didn't like the video unlike or dislike a thumbs down thing because uh i mean fair is fair 
Uh, it was my goal to basically just announce the fact that I've done this and uh, celebrate it in my mind. If I didn't to you, that's okay because, again, like I said at the beginning of this video, technically a solution to a paradox, unless it's a true solution, which is highly improbable, a, a, a solution is paradoxical itself. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing any more of these videos. Uh, I love philosophy, I love paradoxes. If you want me to do one, if you want me to try to solve another paradox, let me know. Um, and let's see if I can wake up with another good idea. My name is Drainin, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.